Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. For today's fur video, day 10 is going to take us to the 13th of February and we'll be able to extend out beyond that instead of GFS and ECM ensembles because we may run down a couple of weeks. We're going to have a look at CFS V2 for the next four weeks at the end of the video and that's going to take us to the beginning of March. I'll get on with that for you in a second. Just say that first video today was our 6am upload. And uh, we've also released the uh, European Out, so please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the vids. And thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, going to start our central temperature. So CT is in now for uh, January. Here we go. It's come out at 4.6. So we did get quite a big downwards correction in the end. Came out at 4.6. That is 0.8 of a degree above the 61 to 1990 average. Um, so just a little bit above the old 61 to 1990 average compared to the more modern averages of 81 to 2010 and uh, 91 to 20, it's about average. In fact, 91 to 20 average, I think, is 4.6. So, uh, virtually bang on average for our uh, for our more modern averages. And uh, that's after a very, very warm start. Of course, it had, had a remarkably hot uh, New Year's Day. Um, and right from that day, you know, the first day of the month, the, the trend was downwards throughout the whole of the month. But still, we came out a little bit above 61 to 1990. As far as February is concerned, we're standing at 9.1, that's 4.8 degrees above average, and that is provisional to the 2nd of, uh, of February. So, um, yeah, very mild start to February. And I've got a thing, I've got a thing January might be the coolest month, not particularly cold, but might be the coolest month of this winter. I reckon there's a chance, a good chance February might come out in the 5s or even the 6s. So it could turn out to be a very mild February, but of course we should wait and see about that. Means of the GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're in Edinburgh today, so the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Edinburgh. And we're starting off above average at the moment. We've got a cold snap coming up over the next... Uh, couple of days. It goes milder again early next week and then a bit cooler again later next week. Uh, it's getting to the second half of the month, hovering very close to average. So for Edinburgh, it looks quite cool, actually, over the uh, next week to week or so, week to 10 days, once today is out of the way. As far as two-metre temperatures are concerned for Edinburgh, they're looking like this. Let's just very quick go over here. They're looking like this. So, of course, it's starting off quite mild at the moment. Then we get this cooler period coming up from tomorrow through to the beginning of next week. Then it goes milder for a couple of days. And then after that, relatively cool or even quite cold later next week. Maybe a slight warming trend as we move into the second half of the month. And as far as snow is concerned for Edinburgh, this is how it's looking. So, um, yeah, there are a few spikes in there um, over the next few days. There could well be some snow showers, some winter showers across the uh, northern half of the country particularly uh, at the end of week and into weekend. And then maybe around the middle part of the month, there could be some snow. Remember, this is for the north, though. If you go further south, there won't be anywhere near as much snow around us. That's for midnight rain. Let's have a look at the sink set. Actually, that's a bit of an upgrade in terms of the uh, snow row, especially around the middle part of the month. Just there, some quite big snow spikes coming through there. So perhaps seem to get a little bit of a cooler or colder snap uh, coming through then. Um, upper air temperatures from the 6Z set, again, very similar, starting off quite mild at the moment. Relatively cool over next week or so, except that push in temperature there. And then into the middle of February, just quite close to long-term averages, two metre temperatures. With the 6Z set, look like this, very similar. So again, starting off above average, going quite cool. A little bit warm for a couple of days there. Then a bit colder again later next week. Then after that, we can see the, the um, big green line that actually that does take off and it becomes a little bit of a uh, mild outlier. So bear that in mind when we see the 6Z GFS run in a moment. If you look at the ECM WF data, uh, before we move on, this is how ECM is looking for Edinburgh again. In terms of the ensembles, so starting off mild, going quite cold, going to push up early next week, then colder again, and then beyond that, perhaps a warming trend around the middle part of February. Uh, right, temperature anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of February are going to be above average much of Ireland, England and Wales, nearer normal though for Scotland. Precipitation anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of February, a bit wetter than average for northern west of Scotland, but rather drier than average for southern, central and eastern parts of England. The latest wind flow map from earthnoldschool.net shows that we're bringing in the winds from a west or southwest direction today, so it is mild again. However, there's a cold front that's through here and behind that, the air is turning 
cold as well as that cold front sweeps through. We'll find the wind turning into west and to northwest, and that will lower the temperature. That's quite an active cold front as well. We'll bring some rain even down into parched ground at the south and the southeast. Right, let's look at some chart data then. So this is the latest uh, UK Met Office, uh, UK Met Euro run. Uh, so this is how uh, it's looking for midnight on Sunday in a rather cool, showery, westerly wind then. We build up a little ridge of high pressure on Monday. And then Tuesday, very mild, high pressure over France, low pressure on Iceland and Greenland, and bring them out west or southwesterly wind. That carries on into Wednesday. Uh, by Thursday, perhaps turning a little bit cooler or colder with winds going into the northwest as heights try to rise in the Atlantic. This is how Icon looks again, very zonal over the weekend with winds in from, from the west. That's quite a strong west as well. We'll bring wintry showers into the north. A little bit of a uh, transient ridge there on Monday. And then as we go through into Tuesday, uh, next week, uh, 8th of February, we'll have high pressure over France, low pressure on Green and Iceland again. Winds will be coming in from a westerly direction. Uh, moving, into middle of next, moving into the middle of next week, the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic and we start to bring some cooler or perhaps somewhat colder air in from the northwest. And uh, maybe here's a chance of a little bit of a cold snap perhaps by the end of next week. There's a cold front for it here. And if that does manage to, manage to push southwards, that would then open the door to a proper and direct northerly wind. This is how the GFS Midnight Run is looking. Again, high pressure is over France and low pressure in the Norwegian Sea on Sunday. So we're looking very westerly, very zonal. Flat as a pancake. And then on into the uh, early part of next week, very mild, high pressure over France, deep low pressure on Greenland, Iceland. And again, pushing those winds in from the west or from the southwest. The middle to second half of next week takes high pressure out into the Atlantic and starts to drag something a little bit cooler or colder in from the north. So it begins to go a bit colder second half of next week with, with winds turning into the north and then high pressure reaches in that's quite a cold ridge that would deliver at very least some quite sharp overnight frost we're back in sort of milder westerly so by day 10 which is the 13th of february and then after that high pressure just takes over that probably brings relatively mild pleasant you know early spring days uh, but maybe cold nights with risk of frost and fog uh, and that takes us pretty much to the end when the high pressure begins to slip away into Russia. And again, the Atlantic is having another go at bringing further wet and windy weather in from the west. Uh, this hour 6Z looks, again, much of a muchness for Sunday, very flat and westerly. And we go into the open next week looking very mild with high pressure over France, low pressure around Greenland and Iceland. And again, that does drag in that really mild southwest wind. And the high pressure that pulls out into the middle of the Atlantic through the middle of next week, with winds turning into more of a northwesterly to uh, somewhat northerly direction. So becoming a bit colder. Second half next week, a little bit of a cold snap. And the high pressure, which is back in from off the Atlantic, turns us drier. But it is cold under that ridge with wintry showers in eastern areas. Day 10 is re-establishing a mild and west or southwesterly wing um, with outbreaks of rain in the north and west in particular. And then beyond that, in more extended range, just very flat, westerly and zonal, right way up to the very end of the GFS 6 f Remember, though, it did become a little bit of a mild outlier uh, late on, certainly in terms of two metre temperatures. GM uh, looking like this. If you enjoyed the video, by the way, please give me a smash like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment as well about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. Um, GM, again, with high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, all looking very, very flat on Sunday into the early part of next week. Again, we remain zonal and westerly. Middle of next week, the high pressure begins to try and pull out into the Atlantic, try and turn the winds into a colder northerly. And we do actually pull off a northerly with the GEM in the second half of the next week. And it's a proper northerly wind, um, which is something we've not seen much of this winter. That would deliver some snow showers to northern and eastern areas. It's very short-lived. We're back into milder west southwest is again by day 10. But there is a very, very brief cold snap there around the uh, around um, day 7 with that. Uh, day 7, day 8. And then uh, the ECM once more with those flat westy winds on Sunday. And then into the Opal next week, high pressure over France, low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, and we're still bringing in those really mild southwesterly winds. Uh, second half next week, we begin to pull high pressure out to us. We tried to get wind in from the northwest. However, out of all the models, I think the uh, ECM is uh, is struggling to get much of a northwesterly or northerly through. Maybe a little fleeting northerly 
very far north Scotland. But I think out of all of the models, the Sham, as it is so often, as has so often been this winter, is the mildest out of all models, you know, for the... Um, for the second half of next week. No cold snap, really. And then we finish up under this area of high pressure. Could deliver some frost to the south, I suppose, but it's relatively mild with west south westy winds in the north. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run. And here comes, from Tretro.com, here comes the cold front tonight, bringing outbreaks of rain south. It does show some snow, but I think it's a little bit overdone. There might be a few flakes that turn up on the back edge of that cold front, particularly over high ground like the Welsh Mountains, the Pennines, um... North Midlands, Staffordshire, Moorlands, those sort of areas might get some flakes tonight and uh, for a while early tomorrow morning. That car front will very quickly get out of the way and leave us with wintry showers into the north and west. But southern and eastern areas will be mostly dry. And then uh, later into the weekend, it turns wet and windy, particularly for more western areas. But some of that rain could start to get through into eastern areas. It does actually look quite wet there on uh, Sunday for many parts of England and Wales about breaks of rain, which is something we haven't seen for a really long time, wintry showers further north. Um, then we go into a little bit of a drier spell early next week, with high pressure over France, of course, so most of the rain then is out to the far north and northwest. And then as we move up towards day 10, it's just a little bit of rain and stoke down across the south, on the 11th of February, I'm not sure <laughs> about that, but that's as we try to get windy into the north, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, after that it does turn drier through, through the early part of next week onwards. These are the, or this is the option on the table uh, within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. No, no, that's some two hours. Where are I? There we go. All right, this is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. It gets us to the 13th of February. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure dominating more or less over top of the country. So that could deliver frost and fog. It's not a cold ridge in particular, but it could deliver some frost and fog, more particularly in southern areas, I would suspect. In two weeks' time, this is the option map. Gone. It's still anti-cyclonic. This is the 18th of February. Uh, again, all members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge sitting over and slightly to the east of the country, lower pressure out to the west. And so, once again, that's going to be mainly dry. There could be frost and fog for days. But, you know, by late, um, or second half of February, the sun will be getting uh, in, in, increasing strength to it. So, by day, it could be pleasantly mild. Temperatures may be into double digits with uh, plenty of sunshine. But by night, there could be frost and fog in that type of pattern. So as we reach you finally, these are 500 millibar heights breaking down to week periods. The first week period will take us from the 3rd through to the 9th of February. The um, coming week, we'll have high pressure to our west and southwest. Low pressure will be to the north and winds will be coming in from rather a westerly direction. So mainly dry in the south, but a little bit more unsettled in the north. Week 2 is going to be the 10th to the 16th of February. High pressure slightly over and to the east of the country. Winds coming up. From right, a west or a southwesterly direction. Uh, so it can be mostly dry, but will be mild if that comes off. Although there could be frost fog, I suppose. Night and morning. We're back in tomorrow for Wesley for over week three, 17th, 23rd of February. Low pressure again around Greenland and Iceland. High pressure to our south. So France pancake winds in from the west. So that's a mild, uh, mild but more unsettled week. And then week four is the 24th of February to the 2nd of March. Again, with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, and winds remain from the west. Same old, same old from the CFS. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please smash your like button, make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Drop a comment and say what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz Webbies. If everybody who subs brings a friend, we're going to get to 14k so much quicker. But I do not know when we'll get to 14k. It may be like end of the year. Because the subs are pretty slow this winter. Since Christmas anyway. It's been a it's been a grind this winter, hasn't it? <laughs> and we're not done yet. Right, so that's it for today's video. Just uh, coming up tomorrow. I'm going to start off with the 6am upload. And we'll have Jeremy Friday and a 10 to 14 day as well. No live stream uh, this week again. So hopefully we'll be back live streaming soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, Mrs. P's still in hospital, um, getting better, but she's still in hospital, so I don't want to have to unplug the phone and, you know, for, for an hour and want to be in contact, uh, if I am needed, which hopefully I won't be, but, you know, you have to think of all eventualities in these situations. So hopefully when Mrs. P is home and uh, is a little bit better, the live streams will recommence. Right, okay, that's it then, uh, we're done, and, uh, we'll see you tomorrow for, uh, tomorrow's videos, but for this video and for today's videos, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.